Yes, this is your boy DJ Wolf here. Um, I just wanted to say something right quick here. I hope it's on. Uh, well, anyway, I'm on live right now, and I got a couple of things on my mind. Uh, let's start the show. This is DJ Wolf Live. <laughs> Okay, guys, just ha- wanted to uh, talk about a few things that's on my mind this morning here. I can't hit the damn back button. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm hoping it's on live. I'm talking and I'm trying to get this thing to, to go right. It ain't acting right this morning. But nevertheless, uh, there's things about black women I know as man that's changed. I mean, we've all known it, but it. I just wanted to give my synopsis on it, man. It's just that... Sometimes I can't take, well, I, I put it like this. I don't think they've changed much for the better for me. Not to me. I don't think they have. Over the years, you know, women, you know, when, when, you're, when you're dating them and things seem to, to go okay and then all of a sudden when you either have, a, they either decide to have kids, you know, in a relationship, once they had the children, man, the things just go south. It's been like that for a long time, and I've been noticing that. I don't know some people say, well, hey, you old black women. Well, I'm going to get a newsflash for you. I got newsflash. It is all black women. Let's be real. Y'all don't want to be honest about that stuff, man. I got to be. You know, over the years, I've noticed that. You know, they, they, they take you through so many, they try to take you through so many extremities on different issues and stuff. They don't want to listen half the time. They don't communicate very well either. They don't communicate well with their own kids. And some, and, 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 and in, in many cases, not even their own sons. You know, you got a lot of single black women that don't communicate well with their sons. I'll give you a prime example. There was a, a YouTube video, and everybody probably seen it, about a year or two years ago, where this young man wanted to go to uh, Florida, and uh, I guess the grandmothers wanted him to go to Alabama or someplace. His mother and grandmother, rather. And... He was adamant he's going to where he wants to go. He was 18, 19 years old. He could decide at that point where he wanted to go to college. And they were adamant that he should be going someplace else. And the moment he made the announcement of where he wanted to go, when he finalized it, I mean, they just like walking around like they had the saddest, you know, puss, puss on their face, man, because he made up his mind as a young man where he wanted to do it, where he wanted to be. And uh, they were adamant that he needed to go to another school. And I think, for to be real, if he's and he got here's the thing, he got the full ride. All right. Now, when you get the full ride for a specific college and you chose to go there, then that's in, in essence that should really be up to the, to that young man to go where you want to go at that point. And, I, and I'm being serious because it was he earned the scholarship. The mother and the grandmother didn't. They, I'm mean, sure they, uh, at some point they did help him uh, achieve his goals by, you know, getting them to practice and all that stuff. But and, you know, playing, you know, sports or whatever. But as far as him making his own decision to where he want to be, at, that really should have been his own decision to where he wanted to be. You know, and, and, th- and this is the problem with y'all today, man. Y'all. Want to control everything black brothers do. Y'all been doing that. This is nothing new. Nothing new under the sun. Y'all been doing this for decades. Y'all want to control about where we go, who we go visit, who we go see. You know, you in some cases, some of y'all will even try to control the friends that we have. You know? Y'all got your own uh, idiosyncrasies when it comes to uh, things that you do on your own, your own agendas. A lot of times, your agendas, you 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 want to make agendas for one thing, and you're doing something else. You know, and y'all, the biggest thing that I have uh, about y'all, black women today, y'all don't like to communicate. Y'all have a hard time communicating with your men, or, or I mean, you know, with your with your man. That to me is a deal breaker. There's no point of any black man 
wanting to be in a relationship with a black woman or any woman of that matter in a serious relationship if she cannot communicate with her man. Although it goes both ways, because if he's not communicating with her, she shouldn't be with him. And if she ain't communicating with him, he shouldn't deal with it either. But y'all are known for this. You know, y'all are known for it. I've seen videos where women try to uh, uh, guilt shame their sons into doing things that they shouldn't have to do. You know, my own mother's tried it with me. You know, sometimes she might get away with it. Most times she didn't, but it depends on certain things. Like I had to take her to the doctor's office uh, last week when I was up there. Now, she could have got my brother to do it because I had something I had to go do to see about regarding my father. And she's telling me, oh, my appointment. And she told me that morning their appointment was at 1030. I'm like, wait a minute. You already knew I had something to do regarding my father, which was very important. Not saying hers was important, but she told me at the last minute. OK, apparently she wasn't talking to her boyfriend. They had fallout. That's another story. So my brother, of course, is across town. And he came on through and picked up my sister and, and uh, they went to go take care of some business with my father. And I had to take my mother to go do that thing because they were both, the, the appointments were both about the same time. So I said, okay, well, let me go on over here. But there was an a issue with, uh, there was a thing about this mother, all right? She had her son uh, when she was in high school. I think it was her senior year. And... She graduated, but she didn't get a chance to go to her prom. Um, and she missed her prom as a result. So, of course, she guilt shamed her son by telling him what she wasn't able to do. And, of course, guess what happened? He got guilt shamed into taking her, his mother, to the prom himself. She was his prom date. I thought it was I, but you know black women. Oh, that's so sweet. That's so sweet that he did that for his mama, you know, and there was nothing wrong with her in the physical sense of uh, anything like that. There was nothing, you know, like she had a disease or anything like that. I'm, I'm glad that she didn't, you know, she was, you know, but it was just the fact that she guilt shamed him to doing just because she had him when she missed her prom. That's guilt shaming. I don't care what anybody say. That is f- flat out. Guilt shaming. And I'm like, really? So you're going to guilt shame him into taking you to his prom because you missed yours. That was dumb. That was dumb. Just get over it. You made your mistakes. Line your mistakes. Stop trying to make up for your for your mistakes that you, I mean, whatever things that you were felt guilty about earlier but because you didn't get to do it. There's a lot of things I didn't get to do growing up. Am I going to guilt, guilt shame my folks because I couldn't do it? No. Did I like the fact that they didn't do it? Yes. I'm not going to guilt shame my folks 20 years later because of something I couldn't do. You know, I'm not going to, you know, <laughs> it's just weird, man. It's just really weird. You know, I'm not going to guilt shame my son to do something that I couldn't do because, you know, I because he was bored. I mean, there's a lot of things I wanted to do when I was in my 20s and stuff. Uh, in my twenties and mid thirties, I wanted to do when he was around, when he was younger. Um, but it's not his fault, you know. It ain't his fault that uh, his mother and I had him, you know. That we wanted to, you know, that we wanted to have him, you know, as our child, you know, when he was born, you know. But yeah, sometimes as a parent, when you get to a point when you start having kids. There's some things you just have to, give, you know, naturally give up. But then you don't guilt shame your kids and the, you know, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. No. You know, my son thought I was guilt shaming him one time because I told me my dad didn't, didn't, you, know, do, you know, didn't go to sports events and stuff. And I told him, I said, don't do that. You know, I didn't, I'm, I, I mean, you know, I, yeah, I mentioned that we didn't. And I didn't really feel left out. But. My son wanted to do that on his own, and, you know, we were going to games anyway as father and son. Now, that's something a father and son do anyway, you know, 
or at least a lot of them do, you know, but this wasn't like a mother telling the son, yeah, you know, you got, uh, uh, you know, take me to a prom. Not like that. That was just, that was just because, you know, she, you know, it was just, it was weird. But I know you probably gonna say, yeah, well, ain't you doing the same thing? Uh, no, it wasn't actually. I wanted to take my son to sports events anyway. That's we love doing that. We like we're in this, we're in this watching sports and stuff like that. He, he know he played sports for a while, so of course I didn't give him to play football. He asked me at two years old he wanted to go play sports. You know, this is this was on his di- his own dime. He wanted to do this himself, so I didn't make him do anything he didn't want to do. That's real talk. That's real talk. You know. I know some of y'all, hey, yeah, yeah. Oh, God, it's change, point change. I'm going to go to the store at this track. Just change like that. I got to change here. Um, but I feel good being doing the things I did as a father. But he, he, here's what I'm getting at here. Black women have always tried to guilt shame men to doing stuff that they didn't need to be doing. Because they have to have their way for with everything that they do. Regardless of what. I want, I want, I want. You know, gimme, gimme, gimme. That's been a long history for that. You know? And I, uh, for a long time, I kind of felt that they've always been about what they want. And they put what they want over the needs of the relationship. And they continue to do so. That's a fact. I'm not saying nothing, and I mean, I'm not saying nothing out of turn. This is all true. They've always done that, and they continue to do the same thing in 2019 that they've been doing for decades on end. Now, I know some of y'all will say, no, that ain't true. you just generalizing. Uh, newsflash, I ain't generalizing a damn thing. All right? I'm telling it like it is. Or like what somebody said, like a T.I. is. I'm telling it just like it is. There's nothing I'm generating, uh, journalizing about that ain't already factual. I'm stating facts. You know, again, I'm stating facts, all right? Because this is what we've done. We've always done this to, uh, you know, women have always got away with so much stuff, man. They got away with lying to you about guys they've been seeing. Talking about, oh, they just friends, you know, mm -hmm. or, you know, or they lied about kids they had that wasn't yours. Matter of fact, I watched a show on Maury years ago where this guy had supposedly had four kids with the woman and there was rumors going around in his neighborhood that none of the kids were his. I mean, I I think no, two two of the three kids weren't his. He found that none of them were his when they did the test. Not a one. Not even close, you know, and that was the, I, I can honestly say that I watched Maury a lot of years. That was the most heartbreaking episode I ever saw. I actually was crying. He was, I was crying with him. I said, that's fucked up. And he was paying for them kids for four, four kids. And she completely lied. Not one of those kids was his. She was horn on him the whole goddamn time. I ain't gonna lie. I'm not a violent guy. Well, Unless you push me to it. I'm not a violent man. Okay? I'm, I'm, I'm really not. But every man, don't care what kind of man they are, every man has their limitations. Okay? You got yours, and I got mine. Okay? And for her to have done that with him, that's the kind of shit would make a nigga pop off. Excuse my French. Four kids. Not one was his. Not a one. All four kids. All by different guys. And she was married to this good dude, man. I felt so bad for him. I, w- I felt so bad. I wanted to go through the television shit, take that bitch, and punch her upside the fucking head. Beat her, beat her upside the head. I really did. That's how that's how upset I was. And that wasn't even my woman. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, that's how bad I felt, man. I felt bad for that guy. I was like, damn, not one kid was his. Not a one. She lied about all four of them. Yeah, look it up. Don't believe me? Look it up. Look it up on Maury. That actually happened on his show. Man, 
I would have, I'm telling you right now, if he didn't get mad, he was a better man than me. But I can tell y'all right up front, straight up, and this is me, I wouldn't have put up with that shit. And I wouldn't have put up with that shit for a very long. No way and fuck. No way and fuck. I would have not put up with that. But this is the kind of stuff y'all do. And then last week, and I talked about it before, I was at home last Friday, matter of fact, just before I came back. I came back that night. Last Friday afternoon, just before I booked my flight, four hours before I got on the plane, I was watching the news. And what was the story that they talked about? Toxic masculinity. Yeah. Who was the, the company who put the commercial out that that, that, that that led to that? Gillette. 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 The best a man can get. They are known for it for many, many years. Of all the companies, Gillette, a well-known, well-documented men's brand, who are under the parent company of a controversial company called Procter & Gamble, okay, who has been known to be involved with controversy stuff with their products for years. This is nothing new about them. This is do- also documented. Google it. Happened to come out with this, and this commercial was so lame. This is what I understand. Everything that, they, that was done in commercial that they uh, that led to try to get you to believe that it was toxic in essence, wasn't even toxic at all. That's what I really don't understand. See, so what was toxic about it? To this day, they haven't said anything about it. You know? Toxic about the fact the guy wanted to go talk to a woman. He didn't bother her. He just, he just looked at it. He, he wanted to say hi. You know, he wanted to holler at her. Nothing wrong with that. Guys do all the time. I want to, like I said, I said in the previous podcast, I would have never met my wife had I not go talk to her. And we were working at a uh, place called Best Products many years ago. Uh, it's kind of like, a, I wouldn't say Best Buy, more like a, a Target or a, I would say more like Target. It was kind of like a line. It was the cost of being a little bit more upscale wasn't really that upscale. You know, it was just like it was. It was just like another version of Target. That's all it was. But anyway. Uh, so, but it was, it was warehouse based kind of place. But anyway, uh, let me get off of that for a second. And at the time I was, I was single. I actually, uh, I was actually on the house with my, my girlfriend at the time who I would have been seeing for six years. And I was already dating other women anyway, but it didn't matter. You know, I was single. You know, and I know she did a few guys. She tried to play it off, but I know she was. And then she finally admitted it. But uh, nevertheless, um, and we weren't even, we, we weren't married or anything like that anyway. We were just dating. That's all it was about. And when I met my wife, this white boy tried to hit on me. Hey, yeah. <laughs> and I told her, you hit me a bit. I said, I'm going to get this one. Trust me. I got her, man. I got this. I told biggest day. And sure enough, we started talking. We started seeing each other. Now, had I not done that, I would have never met the wife, my wife. I would never had this. I would never had my son with her. We would have never been together. We wouldn't be doing the things we're doing today. For Gillette to sit there and say that that consider that as to be a toxic is one of the most inane, asinine things I have ever seen. And misrepresented about men because this is what men do. How you think men would meet with women in the first place? I don't get it. If you look at the commercial, you'll see it. The young, fine woman walked by these two guys, one black, one white. The white guy get ready to holler. The black guy, you know, tell him to pump his brakes. He put his hand out to him like, oh. Like, huh? That's not harassment, though. You know? But they will consider that as harassment. That's not harassment. It's really not. You need meet women at clubs and the grocery stores, libraries, 
I met women. I met a woman, a girlfriend after before my wife. I met a girl uh, years before her. Before I, you know, before I met my wife, uh, at a wedding party. As a matter of fact, it was at a wedding reception, and I booked her. I met my uh, other girlfriend on a blind date. Another girl when I used to go to Job Corps back in the eighties. On another date. That's usually how that works. You know, I've even met girls overseas where we, I was just walking down the street, just like in the, in the commercial. She was, I mean, girls walking down the street, I holler at We got together. You know what I'm saying? And the rest is history. But, I'm just, you know, guys barbecuing, talking about boys be boys. Rough housing. Okay? There's a kind of a gray area with bullying, but to me, that's not really toxic masculinity. It has anything to do with that. That might be the, from this functionality of families in general that causes some kids to act that way. You know, because you got girls are bullies too. Let's be real. I know this for a fact. <clears throat> All right. And how does that ad- come up to something called toxic masculinity? Nothing in that commercial, to be totally honest, addressed that to me. But what was the point of the commercial if they weren't trying to address that? Because that's what they were trying to do. They were trying to say that men uh, aren't being the best that they can get based on lame, I mean, normal everyday stuff that men have always done. Really? If you watch the commercial and view it and analyze it the way I did, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. And any woman that thinks is any different than what I just said, that this commercial is based on men being men, even though Gillette overstated there's something beyond that, and that's bullshit, is bullshit. If you really believe that, oh, that's what they consider toxic masculinity, if that's what they consider toxic masculinity, then you don't know men. Now, I'm telling you right here, I'm here to tell you that. You don't know men, period. And you obviously don't know what the fuck, excuse my French, obviously don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Real talk. You don't. Period. You know? Because when I saw that commercial, I'm not going to lie, my mouth dropped. My mouth looked like, I was like, what the fuck is this shit? I know they're not saying that being a man is toxic. Because that's basically what the commercial said. (laughs) If you're a man and you do all those normal things that they do in the commercial, then they're saying you're toxic. How retarded is that? How retarded is that? I'm still shocked about that. I mean, I say, now, I've been a man for most of my life. I've always been a man. I'm just saying, you know, from a boy to a man. (laughs) And I'm like, that was the most controversial and shockingly uh, misrepresented statement that I've ever heard. And Gillette tried to make it more than what it was. You know, that whole commercial really it shows examples of men being men. That's normal. But they try to say it's more to it than that. They try to say it, it creates toxic environment. None of it did. The only thing to me was toxic was Terry Crews talking about, well, we men need to fight this. No, he needed to to, to, to stand up to the man who sexually harassed him. That this is a cock diesel six foot guy. I, I heard he's tall guy. I don't know how tall he really, but he's a pretty good side. He's a pretty solid brother. Now, if I was in his issues, I would tell him, hey, back the fuck away from me, man. Back up off me. He could have got a deal in Hollywood than what he did. But if you notice with Terry Crews, Terry Crews, man, he's worse than Kevin Hart. Terry Crews does a lot of suspect stuff on film. Now, I thought it was just him on film, and I always wondered about this. Like, why is he doing all this gay shit in the, all these roles? He's a big, bulky black guy who should be showing strength to young black men. He's showing femininity in, uh, to young black men in these roles that he do. And it's the bulk of the roles he do. No, Terry Crews has not actually ever had a lead role in any films. What movies you know that Terry Crews actually had Lee Rowland? Don't say that, uh, the, uh, I know what y'all gonna say. In this, you know, what is it? Expendables? No. 
He didn't have a lead role in that. That was Sylvester Stallone. Uh, who else was that? Uh, uh, Bruce Willis and uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Those guys had lead roles in that. They were the leads. They were three main leads in the movie. You know? Yeah, he was a character in the movie. You know? And and don't get me wrong. Terry Crews is a, is a pretty decent actor. I'll give him that. I've seen him play dramatic roles. I've seen him play comedic roles. He's very good. In, he's very versatile in both. This is a guy who was a former NFL player like Jim Brown. And really, technically, if you think about it, Terry, Terry Crews should have been the next Jim Brown. But, of course, Hollywood don't want that. You see, Jim Brown, during his era, not only was he a breakout star after he left the NFL to go to Hollywood, but he left the NFL to go to Hollywood, was a breakout star, loved by women all over the world, all kind of women, you know what I'm saying? You know, they saw something in black men that they never saw before, the strong type. The strong leadership that has never been seen before in Hollywood up to then. That's a known fact. You don't believe me? Watch his movies. Okay? Document it. Google it. Jim Brown broke all the barriers in Hollywood at the time. I know y'all gonna say Sidney Portier, which he did, but Jim Brown broke the doors and ran through it like he did when he was in the NFL. Okay, real talk. Terry Crews could have done that. All right. But Terry Crews let himself get in the predicament where he's, you know, doing all these suspect roles. You know, think about it. White chicks. uh, Snakes on a plane, I believe. And uh, what was the other movie? Yeah. uh, I think it was a solo plane, if I'm mistaken. Uh, Friday after next. But the Friday after next and the white chicks and a couple other things he's done make him suspect like a motherfucker. I'm sorry. And I like Terry Crews. I like, you know, you know, he had a, a short-lived uh, reality show on BT for two years. I love this show. You know, because he, you know, he thought, you know, he had his wife and his family on there. It was a really good show. I, I wish they had kept it going, but then, unfortunately they didn't. It was called The Family Cruise. It was good. It was really good. Um... But that in itself is why we are being emasculated. Because they put our images on there to make us look like we're not the strong type. And the strong type that leads. I can give you examples upon examples. I give you a good example. The series uh, 9-11. Or nine one one on uh, Fox with my girl uh, Angela Bassett. Now, don't get me wrong; I love me some Angela Bassett for a long, long time. Okay, I respect her game in, in the business very much. So, they made her. I think she's an EP on the show anyway. But her husband, or the guy who plays her husband on the show, or ex husband rather, is. A homosexual. Now, don't get me wrong. Homosexuals have their place in the roles everywhere, like everybody else. Okay, they're they're still people, regardless of what they do. They're still people, and I and I'll say that because they are. All right, but this is the stereotype that they do with black men on TV. This is not the first one. I can't think of three other roles, but that, but it's a bunch of them that I've seen like that. You don't see, matter of fact, I don't know if any TV shows, I'm talking about, I ain't talking about reality shows. I'm talking about scripted series where you have a strong lead black character. And I would say Anthony Anderson on Blackish. And even he, there are some things about that that I question too, but it is a good show. And he, there are times where, you know, you, you see it's like, okay, it's still a good show. I, I, I can't really knock it, but you know, I'm talking about, the definite, definitive strong black roles on television for men. There aren't any beyond that. There really aren't. I couldn't name three. I could not. There aren't any. Where the black, where the black man is a lead character, a strong lead character, period. There aren't any. Okay. 
None. And I challenge anybody to say it's different because there aren't any. You couldn't name me three. I'm not counting reality shows. Reality shows is a different story. All right? That don't count at all. I'm talking about the way they present and project black men in film and television. Okay? They continue not to want to do that. Look at Colin Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick did something the NFL player hadn't done in decades. Bring forefront front to an issue that needed to be addressed to the masses. And he got shut down for doing it. Not only by uh, the NFL owners and probably some other players, but the president of the United States got in on that and continue to keep him out the league. Just because of, an, because of an opinion. What kind of bullshit is that? And you know, you I heard people at work, I heard people on the radio, TV, or everywhere talking about, well, he shouldn't be doing it in other places you do it at. Y'all motherfuckers are worried about the goddamn game on you than about the situation with people who are getting harassed, beat up, and killed for just being black. That in itself is complete bullshit. And the president to co-sign on it makes him a punk. Yeah, I said it. That's the last thing you would want to, to, to happen to any of your people in this country is to be harassed like that. To be uh, marginalized. The Vinny race. That makes no sense to me. Well, man, and particularly black men, we need to have more open discussions about this, man. We need to definitely boycott Gillette and uh, Procter & Gamble. Personally, I'm, I haven't used Gillette products in a long time. Matter of fact, it's been over 20 years. Matter of fact, I, I, I can't actually remember when I actually used a Gillette product, to be serious. I, I can't. Matter of fact, when I shave my head, when I do shave, uh, I don't even use Gillette. I use Wall. Wall has no association with Procter Gamble that I know of. If they did, believe me, I wouldn't use them either. You know. But I just wanted to get my two cents out the way about this, guys and gals. You know, we need to continue to talk about this because the one of the things you really don't want to be doing is allowing other people to determine who you are as a person in this country and in this world. For too long, we let other people define us as men, as black men. You know, now it's time for us to define ourselves to everybody who we really are. I'm sick of that. Well, we other people try to, well, you know, this is the way you should be. And women are doing it too. That's making it so bad. All the toxic femininity and they want to define you, but you can't say anything about them. Really? Like I said, if you watch the commercial, although Gillette is trying to tell you a different message than what we really are, based on the commercial itself, there's nothing toxic about it. But Gillette is trying to say that even though that shit is normal of all stuff that was done in the commercial, that it's not considered normal anymore. That I don't get. And until we... Establish a redefinition of who we've always been and where we need to be in our place in manhood in this world. Everybody else will be trying to do it for us. That's all I got, guys. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. I may do another live podcast uh, between now. Well, actually, I'm going. I am going to do one on Monday about another man, Dr. Martin Luther King, and talk about why is it every. Uh, uh, between every January and February is all about Martin Luther King. I know but January because it's his birthday and the holiday. But we're going to talk about that man in particular and the stuff that he had to put up with out here. Because he definitely was a man's man. And I will be talking about that on Monday for certain. All right, guys. This is DJ Wolf. My channel is for all to hear TV on YouTube. My 
audio uh, podcast channel is Spreaker.com slash DJ Wolf. All right. And YouTube, this show is called DJ Wolf Live, which I'm getting ready to make uh, a name change soon on it. Uh, I may just change it all, all the way to DJ Wolf because, you know, I just want to be able to, so people won't get confused about who I am when I talk about different things. All right, guys, that's all I got. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Oh, uh, questions or comments, please uh, send me a, uh, drop me an email. That's DJ Wolf Live at AOL.com. That's DJ Wolf Live at AOL.com. Uh, you can also leave a message on YouTube in the comment section. Please rate it, like this, and subscribe. All right. Uh, any social suggestions, you can also leave them on there as well. All right, guys. This is DJ Wolf. Glad to be uh, talking to you about this because it helps me get it off my chest. All right. Appreciate it. God bless. Y'all have a great weekend. I'll talk to you later. I'm out. Mm-hmm.